independent investor channel, I take on some responsibility and I enjoy, I enjoy doing so. I really do um, in providing a perspective on, on highly on holdings corp and how things have transpired uh, over the last 18 months here. We're probably in a dark period, I guess, you know, I scope the landscape and I think a lot of people, if they were to view my posts, maybe in a, a Twitter feed or something, they may even misconstrue what it is that I uh, personally feel about this company right now. And I think that just speaks to the interpretation uh, on the social media landscape and how we need to take that in context and, and through um, the appropriate lens. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything about how I feel about the stock um, unless I come on and I say it directly to you and why that it, that is. Okay. A, a post to Twitter that doesn't um, give any type of explanation as to the context surrounding the post. As a matter of fact, I do that for awareness and I do it for a reason. Um, if I could stop doing that, that would be great. I wish I could just you know, wake up every morning and expect that there's a few tweets out there with progress on the company. And they've just chosen not to do that. Do I blame them? No. Is it a bad thing? No. Does it change my conviction about this company? No. Do I expect the same of other companies out there? Do I wake up every single morning and expect that 3M is going to put news feeds out there to somehow satisfy my appetite for progress on this company? I think we need to be somewhat fair on what it is that we know and what it is that we perceive to be with this company. And I think sometimes groupthink, especially through social media, can be somewhat rampant. And I do give kudos to those channels out there that uh, I watch. I'm hungry for information because I can deal with a recessed stock price. To be honest with you, this is investing. This is what I signed up for a long, long time ago. Um, part of me is, is, is this is what I do. Um, I'm an investor. And I don't call myself that lightly. And especially entering into a company where the risks in the short term could potentially be overshadowed by the gains that are realized down the line. We are just not at that point. And if you expect day-to-day -day validation out of a stock like this, you are going to be sorely disappointed. I have said from the beginning on this, if you're interested in taking a small position or a large position, it does not matter. You are going to have to take a long perspective and you are going to have to hold through some un imaginable volatility, unimaginable. You think what you're going through now is unimaginable? Wait till the stock starts to go up and you're sitting on profit. That's going to be doubly difficult to hold the stock because now you're going to be sitting on profit and you're going to rem be remembering all, all these dark days that you went through with the company. I think in either case, some perspective probably is warranted. I think having a, a, a realistic approach to the luxury category of having the opportunity to even invest in a company like this in the first place and not lose your perspective, you know, after a couple months or, or even after a couple years of, of investing in this company. And it has not worked out the way that you wanted it to work out. And if you say it like that, you start to realize that keeping focus on the things that you know as opposed to making up things that you don't know is probably in everybody's best interest, especially when it comes to making an educated decision about what is right for you. And I try to impart those things to you guys as to why I see what I do with this company, why I play the angles that I do. A lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot, there was a lot of people that actually liked that scrutinizing interview or mock interview that I gave with Thomas Healy. I have a reason to do those things, guys. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not a rude person. Okay. But, but those questions that I asked are, are justified and warranted. The problem is with a young company, they should be too blocked busy. Getting that product in the, uh, the hands of the innovation council, which is exactly what they said they were going to do via the roadshow. 
Now, my understanding in the most recent communications here is that they have been doing just that this week. Have we seen any correspondence on it? No. Does that mean that you shit your pants and you sell all your stock because you haven't had the ample amount of information that you feel like you are due from the company? Of course not. That's absurd. It doesn't mean that those goings on back behind the scene, if they choose to share it, fine. If they don't choose to share it, there's probably a justifiable reason as to why they are not sharing that information or are unable to share said information with the general public, okay? It's almost like giving highly on the benefit of the doubt. And I understand when you go through times like this, everybody's emotionally charged, everybody's discouraged. You know, I, I watched Paul's last offering on Hylion, which I watch all of his videos on Hylion, and he does such a good job. And he was right on the money. He basically kind of captured in a bottle the way everybody's feeling by saying that it's, it, it's exhausting to put forward the amount of effort into a cause. And I think for Paul, it really is just like it is for me, more about the cause and investing in an opportunity and a vision for the future. Is the world a better place with a solution like Hylion? Of course it is. There's bulls and bears on both sides. Seemingly, some of the people who are down on this company are down on the company, seemingly wanting it to fail. I don't quite understand that at all. I'm not really sure I understand the vested interest there in seeing said company or any company fail for that matter. If this company ends up you know, failing per se, it's really going to put a black eye on, uh, certainly if there's not already a black eye on the SPAC market, but from a grander perspective, it'll stymie technology. I mean, who the hell is going to want to invest in a company when Hylion has just determined that even with a very, very sharp knife walking through the jungle, it is impossible to make it. It is impossible to bushwhack a trail through all of the adversity that you're going to get dealt entering into public markets by some accounts to say that it came into public markets prematurely. Um, I am one of those. Uh, the, the, to the contrary, they took an opportunity to come to public markets and the verdict is still out as to whether or not they are going to be able to leverage this opportunity and, 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 and see it through and realize the very reason why they came to public markets in the first place. And this is where I come back to the top five things that I think you need to ask yourself, what is it that we know? And I think this is really going to help separate the gray matter for a lot of people into black and white. You guys can agree, you can disagree whether or not you think these are positives. But unfortunately, when we start to get into this funk, it seems like we start to forget all of the progress that's been made. Well, there's been no progress. There's been no orders. I beg to differ. I think there's a different perspective to be had there. I think it's certainly justified of a few differing opinions on that front. Don't you? I, I understand a young company being scrutinized, but is there a point where the scrutinization is becoming a little bit more than justified? It, it begs to question rhetorically whether or not the scrutiny on behalf of a, a, a team that is 150 large is even capable of doing some of the things that is being charged to them to do. Certify the Hypertruck ERX, get it eligible to uh, gain that EPA compliance that we're all uh, searching for, get that winter validation done that they've earmarked a few times as being of utmost importance because of some of their clients um, being in the great north, our friends to the north up in Canada, which I've validated that through the due diligence I've done on Hylion, is that Hylion's got customers all over the place. They really do. And if there are leads of interest there that are not reportable uh, on to the general public just yet, it doesn't mean that that lead does not exist. And I think there's a lot of unknowns like that with this company. There's fragments through the evolution of this company where they've engaged and actually put the product in the hands of these uh, customers over the years and 
had nothing but positive return on those uh, products and, and putting it into the rigor of over-the-road trucking. So I'm really interested to see how this story develops and evolves over time. I really think what it is that is responsible to do now is to look back over the knowns and then to presume or anticipate or demonstrate a little bit of instinct in this game. It's very scary to come onto a YouTube and say, look, part of your thesis needs to be based in a, a, a somewhat of a vision somewhat of an instinct. And there are things that can kind of help curtail that. I'll talk about it a little bit when I talk about what has been known or what has transpired up to this point. What is fact? What is fiction? Um, what is presumptuous? And, and we go from there to align a course toward the horizon as we enter into 2022 and years beyond to see this company start to mature and come across some of those, those catalysts that I think are out there. And nobody has the ability, unfortunately, there's a lot of movies about it, but there's nobody out there that can tell the future. Is this company going to the pink sheets? Is it behaving like a pink sheet? Well, that's an opinion. And I think it's a, a, a little bit of a bridge to say that. I think it's somewhat unfair, I do. Um, I think by one admission, this company's 18 months old. So it, it's hard to say that it's time to go ahead and depress said lever on the toilet and flush all initiative down the toilet when the real talk behind the scenes at Hylion may reflect a completely different story in that if we put the cards on the table and we put the pieces together from the knowns and start to expect what that roadmap could look like into the future, I think things become a lot more clear as to whether or not you want to take a position in the company or not. And I've said this many, many times, you do or you don't want to become an investor in this company. It's just that simple. Okay. You want to solve the meaning of life? Go do it. That's great. This is stock investing. You either buy the stock or you don't. There are ramifications and there are benefits on both sides of the house. Not investing in the company can cost you money long-term if it goes up. Investing in the company now can cost you money in the short to medium or long-term if the company goes down. But it can also cost you money if you don't decide and the company does something other than what you expected it to do, okay? And I think if you start to look at those different scenarios or contingencies, when you're looking at what a stock could potentially do, it will really help you in just kind of coming to the realization there, there is no contingency that you can forecast. You can only make your best educated guess. And dare I say, use some instinct when applying your stock thesis across the board. And you, you do that with everything, guys. Stock market investing is not, is not special to this. You take strategic risks in your life, and no matter what you do, you buy a vehicle, you buy an overpriced vehicle, you buy a home in an up market, you make certain investments in your life, some of them pan out, others do not, okay? Don't have unfair expectations of the opportunities in stock market investing. Look at me. I'm doing exactly what it is that I want to do. I'm right in the pocket talking about a company that I absolutely love. I've loved it from the second I looked at it, took a, took a position in it, uh, reflective of my total overall portfolio. I believe that it's within scale. Um, and we're right there in the pocket to make a life-changing uh, um, uh, um, um, improvement to the, to the financial situation uh, by getting in on a company, which I feel like is at the ground floor as a matter of fact, I don't think it could get any worse than this. I say that tongue in cheek. It's proved this wrong for the last 18 months that yes, in fact, it can get a lot worse. But I think in, in all honesty, it's never as good as you think that it is $58. And it's probably never as bad as you think that it is here basing at $6. It's never bad. I, I think the truth probably resides somewhere in the middle as this company finds its footing and we're able to use uh, quantifiable metrics to use its uh, fair value. Um, I saw one YouTuber, fabulous video, uh, about assessing fair market to this particular company. 
and the fair market value put it at less than half cash. And, and I just, I don't understand that rationale, how a company could be valued less than its liquidation value if you went ahead and sold all of its assets off, liquidated everything, but it's still worth half of what um, its tangible and intangible assets uh, are. I never really understood that. Said a few things about the company that were incorrect as well. So all is fair is in love and war. war. I think it makes us more the wiser when we do strike up discussion on this topic and we revolve around it. Um, I just had a discussion with Lewis Baltimore today. I think he's been great. I think he's been great with me. And I told him, I said, look, Lewis, I might get contentious in a tweet, or I might seem like I'm pressing highly on. That's exactly what I'm doing in the social media space. But it's business at the end of the day. And when it comes down to publicity, bad and good publicity is always good publicity. Okay. It's not going to affect the stock price one way or the other. Trust me. The stock price is going to do what the stock price is going to do. I've justified that time and time over on the hundreds of companies that I've profiled through my time. Many, many companies that I've profiled that I had no idea would go up, would go up. And many, many companies that I've talked about on the YouTube channel, they go down and they go down for a long, long time. So it doesn't really matter. I think what needs to be the key focus is that business is business. And my conviction. Or, or rationale for a specific tweet needs to be understood with regard to the meaning behind said tweets, especially if it's re uh, released open source uh, over the social media landscape for a bunch of vultures, you know, to gravitate to. Now, there probably is an essence of meaning as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's to provoke some discussion. It gets the churn going. It gets the discussion going on this company that needs more awareness put out there. And I'm just one voice. That's it. Okay. Don't, don't have an unrealistic expectation of me as one voice to come on and be the be all end all. Paul would tell you even that's crazy. You know, he, he says that all the time. He's just one, one voice giving a very unique perspective and a very educated perspective at that. I just appreciate the hell out of Paul's message, I really do, speaks from the heart, and he's got a, a lot of experience as to what he sees going on in the industry. But at the end of the day, it is a singular opinion, just like mine is. And I think collectively, we can probably get to a better place if we can have an open mind and an open dialogue with regard to a company that we either love or we hate. No problem. All is fair in love and war. Number one, things that we know about with this company, the board and the team, both expanding. They've done nothing in 2021 to ex, uh, give us any indication that the board uh, cannot expand. Um, there's been a lot of appointees to the board. A lot of people will look at this as a negative. I don't. I look at this as a structural solidification of the framework of the company that needs to be in place when it's time to uh, identify strategic directions. And when you have strategic directions as big as a global market, they are infinite. And those connections are uh, priceless. They're invaluable. They're invaluable. So over the last even just quarter, we beefed up from 90 employees to 150. This is a positive, guys. It's a positive. Companies expanding, increasing the workforce. Um, you know, some of the insight that I get from taking my own initiative to talk to Lewis and, and get the insights of, of what it's like to work at Highly On. They love it. They love it. So while social media is bashing the company, there's actually employees there from top to bottom that enjoy working at the company. So what gives? Is some of it justified? Is some of it unjustified? Is some of the critique and criticism justified or unjustified? Things to deliberate around. But when you look at this, it is a known category. In other words, it is something that we can look at and assign either a positive or a delta to. And it's something that me as a shareholder and an investor in this company put in the positive category. It's just my choice to do so. Others may look at it differently and say, you know, I think they've expanded their board too fast. Or, the, you know, giving away 3,000 shares to Elaine Chow was a bad idea. You know, I, I disagree. And, and I choose to, and I reserve the right to have my opinion on where I place these knowns in the category. It's a known, 
no matter what category you put it in. And I, I look at this as being a positive uh, addition to the uh, framework to what needs to be a multi-year build out uh, of what is going to be uh, the upper management and the board of governance, uh, as well as the senior management team at Highland Holdings. Number two, what do we know up to this point? Orders get brushed over all the time, man. I think that's a big mistake, guys. I think that's a big mistake. Everybody's losing their shorts over Pepsi, solidifying a four-year order with uh, Tesla. 100 uh, truck order that was uh, placed uh, four years ago, delayed all the way up until then. Does Tesla take a black eye for that? No, Be Tesla can do no wrong, right? Whereas Hylion seemingly can do no right. I find the contrast in that extremely interesting in that I look at Hylion Holdings and I don't think they've done a whole lot wrong. To be honest with you, I could use a little bit more transparency and I don't put quite the pressure on as some of the other talking heads on social media to demand that they're out there every day, all day. They're choosing not to do that. Perhaps maybe they are incapable of doing so. D does it change my disposition about my position and conviction long-term in the stock? No, it doesn't. And that's just my personal opinion on it. I would expect that you derive your own. But when it comes to orders in the order book that's been solidified thus far, 1,590 orders, 1,490, I guess, last count, is nothing to shake a stick at. These are serious orders, guys, serious. And you start to throw in the uh, rollout, and it was a soft rollout of the 75 of all electric uh, operation, start to align the stars a little bit with the last um, meeting with Wegmans and the last uh, explanation video from Drive Mix Game. My boy Dexter over there who's putting it down with regard to some of the boots on the ground type of application in how the Hylion product is actually speaking the trucker's language, which I cannot do. And Dexter feels that go, uh, um, gap in a big, big way, man, talking about where that EX solution has been put into the Wegmans fleet. Uh, on the double tandem trailers up in New York. Very interesting. You start to put two and two together. It's not that difficult. And you start to understand perhaps maybe that 75 uh, miles of all electric run capability from the Hypertruck ERX uh, is going to be an absolute game changer. And, and I, I actually think there's no way of anticipating or quantifying at this point how big that could be. My conviction is that it's going to be big. It's going to be big. Cities like New York and Los Angeles specifically are the two that come to my mind. You start to expand globally and you really start to expand into some of the most uh, large cities in the world um, that, that need this capability to eliminate uh, or drastically cut down on the carbon emissions within the city. Cities still need goods. They need to have the ability to get said trucks from point A to point B, and more importantly, from point B back to point A, right? Very, very important to be able to engage in business within the city, operate all electric, and then get out of the city and, and go ahead and kick on the generator back again. Hylion allows that to, to happen. It's the only solution that I've seen that actually allows that to happen. We put this in the knowns category, guys. We put this in the known category. Is the order book canceling? Is it going down? Is it shrinking? Of course not. It is indeed expanding. It's expanded as of just a couple of weeks ago on the Q3 earnings report with the last uh, announcement of the Monet order that came through. 40 Hypertruck ERX. This is nothing to shake a stick at. It is known. You can say, well, they need to do thousands. I agree. If they can't get into the OEMs, it's game over. We do have a relationship with one OEM. It is the last or the only relationship that I understand with Peterbilt to be really that link to the potential for mass scale up uh, on their order book. They need to get in with all of the OEMs. If they cannot do that, and I find it hard to believe that they would have come to public markets without the ability or the assurance that they were going to be able to do that. That is a delta in my category. They have to be able to do that if this company is going to realize the max value. They cannot piece together and expect to deliver on orders of 40, 50, even a few hundred Hypertruck ERXs. Those ERX orders have got to come through in the thousands. 
And that is where the ramp up and scale and the true value of Hylian is realized. I will go so far as to say that the EX hybrid has to do the same. It has to follow suit. But when we're talking about what is known on a young company that is 18 months old, we are talking about an uh, order book that is indeed expanding and not shrinking. Very important to, to identify and, and to set a roadmap for the future. The question is, are they going to continue to expand or are they going to lose out or are they not going to win any new orders? That is the question. It's up for you to answer. My conviction is that they will continue to win orders uh, because they've yet to penetrate really outside of Wegmans and a few already uh, solidified orders for the uh, reservation order book, uh, the Innovation Council. That's going to be the key. You know, remember, uh, Anheuser-Busch is hanging out in the wings, okay? Ruan, some of these companies, man, they, Schneider, they drive for big, big uh, outfits. Warner, Warner's a big company, man. You see the trucks that they're pulling? A lot of the times, man, these are, these are the sub companies, right, that we know and love, Dollar General, uh, Publix stores, uh, uh, and they drive for a lot of these companies. So the, the, the addressable market here is key in realizing some of the value of the Innovation Council, and that's not to speak of some of the other interested parties that were not part of the Innovation Council um, that, that are still interested in the product. So very important to address orders. Is it big? Is it too small? Is it too? I, it, I, it doesn't matter. It is what we know now. Build your conviction based on what we know and not what you perceive to be. Number three is the product. This is interesting. Um, I, I've uh, really dialed back, if not just completely pissed on the Yahoo thread. Um, uh, seriously, um, I've taken a, a, just a huge dump right on the top of it because it, it basically is a manure house. Um, and I cannot believe some of the idiotic things. And, and it is a treasure trove for people to go in there and just spread whatever hate and disconnect, put their memes in there. It just, it's so, it's so childish, man. It's not even funny. This is the big leagues. And I, I would be hard pressed to understand if the vast majority of those people don't have two nickels to rub together. They just go in there to spread hate and discontent because they're hateful and discontentful. That's just how they are in their own nature. But when you talk about product, Hylion does have product and they do have sales. That is a fact. Whether or not you want to dispute that fact and just start making stuff up that's untrue, that's totally up to you. But their product, if you've done any surface level due diligence, is the Hybrid EX and the Hypertruck ERX. Those are the two products. Now, the Hybrid EX is ready. It is ship ready. It's ready for order. It's ready for ship. Okay. What is going to delay some of those shipments is the supply chain issues that we all know is outside of Hylion's control at this particular juncture. The Hypertruck ERX is in the phase right now of product validation. And if I were going to say that there was a consensus within Hylion, I would say something like this. They want to get it right. <laughs> Collectively, they want to get it right. There are investors at stake here. There are big financial institutions at stake. There are preliminary investors in the company that want to see this company uh, see it through. They're not going to put a product out there that they haven't went through all of the checks and balances that are available to them that they put value in now during this time where there isn't a slowdown anyway. So it might kind of be just a blessing in disguise in that this time has been afforded to Hylion. Unfortunately, you know, they can't turn out any volume right now, but fortunately they can go through the validation in the manner that they uh, deem uh, necessary. And, and I think this could be a big win for them once they get that EPA certification. I think that's going to be huge for them. Okay. So the products, the products is what it is that we know. Hybrid EX went through lots and lots of validation. It is finalized now. Hypertruck ERX is going through that validation. Those are the two products. The real ace up everybody's sleeve or highly on sleeve in this is, are they going to continue to offer just these two products for the next 20 years? Or is there another use application for this technology? That's another interesting catalyst that I love to see roll out 
as this company evolves over time and they look to find other use cases for their technology um, as they expand and grow and, and really start to put this solution with their battery technology being really the heart of the system here uh, in other applications. Um, number four, this is what we know. And what is the mission of Hylion? We've always talked about to reduce the carbon emissions footprint, but does that mission align with where the industry is at this particular juncture? I've seen a lot of people say Hylion has to bridge the gap to industry. This might be true, but how long of a bridge is that to gap? And is there resistance on the side of industry that could prohibit Hylion from even realizing its goal of seeing its solution in the hands of the fleets? I don't have any indication of that because of the interviews that are provided by Thomas Ely gives us a completely different assessment. Now, whether or not he's misconstruing the situation, really to make sure that that bridge is as short as he can possibly define in the landscape. But I would go so far as to say that I think industry does want to change. Again, I come back to the Tesla order. I see some real problems with the Tesla full charging truck. And, and I don't know how much validation Pepsi did. I don't know if they looked at Tesla as being a lot more established than some of these other up and coming EV plays, Nikola, Hylion, and Hyzon. I don't know if they just looked at that and said, well, they're a solidified player. They must know what they're doing. We're going to introduce these trucks into shorter routes because the rating is 250 miles, whatever it is. Okay. And they felt comfortable making that investment. Perhaps maybe those hundred are a dummy order of basically research and development. And that could be the case too with a Fortune 500 company like Pepsi, drop those dollars into an established um, BEV type of application. It doesn't mean Hylion's out. It doesn't mean Hyzon or Nickel is out either. It just means that for me, it proves that the industry is, is interested in taking that leap of faith into the technology that's available right now and sharing in that mission. Okay, we all remember how the solar debacle happened about 20 years ago. Nobody was ready to buy into that mission then. And a lot of solar companies came and just fell dead on their face. They didn't go anywhere. A lot of investors lost a ton of money back then because I don't think the industry was ready to adopt to an EV future at that particular time. They weren't ready to make those infrastructure leaps because the cost just were not prohibited to make those investments and the return on investment just wasn't there. And I think in some cases with regard to the technology that we have now, I don't even think you can make those use cases for some of the companies that are in this close company, Tesla, Nikola, Hyzon. I don't think you can make the uh, TCO case just yet with regard to some of the cost of some of the uh, fueling options that they've gone to or the cost of the electricity or the availability of said electricity from the infrastructure to pull from the grid, okay? I think there's some real hangups there, but it's interesting to me the way Pepsi wants to take that leap of faith with a company like Tesla. It just shows to me that there is willingness on the side of industry to share in that mission. That is a known, guys. The time is now. And if you don't feel like there's a movement going on toward a cleaner future, I think I'd like to hear your comments in the comments section below. I've said this many, many times. I've always cared about the environment. I've always been a steward of the environment. I'm not one of those guys that doesn't acknowledge my impact on the earth while I'm here enjoying the fruits of nature while I'm here. I mean, I'm from Oregon, one of the most beautiful states out there. I mean, it is absolutely spectacular. My current state of Virginia is, is also very, very beautiful state. We all have somewhat of a, of a duty, okay, to take care of the planet and leave it in the hands of um, uh, uh, the next generation better than the way we had it. And I think over the last 50 to 100 years, we've really gone downhill in just for the sake of business, ignoring our, uh, our responsibility to the earth to do whatever we can do even if there is a leap of faith into technology, that we do just that. 
And Hylion is at the forefront, along with the few others that are taking that initiative to take on this challenge and, and really codify this mission of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and reducing the carbon footprint score for these uh, uh, individual institutions, okay? The last thing I will say is the opportunity. Is this a knickknack industry that we're going after? No, it is an 800 billion, probably closer to a trillion as the industry expands. Aligned with the fact that that $800 billion addressable market is actually turning out new vehicles just about every seven to 10 years is about the rotation in the fleet, which means that every year they have trucks coming off and they have trucks that are being sold off probably to other countries and initiating new transportation means. So to integrate into that opportunity really just speaks to the magnitude of the industry that Hylion is going after. It's enormous. And I've said this many, many times, the investor presentation, the original one that gets so much scrutiny about the numbers that were projected at the time that it was rolled out, gets a lot of scrutiny. But I understand the intent of that document. It's to show what is possible, okay, in, in, in uh, uh, grabbing a piece of this market. Now, I don't know if Hylion is going to grab that much, more, or none at all. I, I don't know that at this point. Remember how I talked about the roadmap? And the most probable return or the most probable result that can come from what we know rather than what we perceive to be, and that is the track to orders. Hylion has proven that they can secure reservations to the order book. I believe that continues into 2022, and I believe we reach a catalyst with the company in their ability to ramp up that, that, that scale eventually. That's the value proposition here, guys. We're not there yet. That's why we're looking at a stock price that's close to $6. It's that simple. It's, it's, that's what it's worth now, okay? In the eyes of the market, that's what it's worth. And at any given moment, the market is right, proven over time to be, in most cases, wrong over the long term, okay? That's the value proposition, but the opportunity that we speak of here, do we take all the pred pedigree that we talked about and wrap it in a bottle? And do we put all of what we know on somewhat of a roadmap or set a course toward pursuing said opportunity? You have to do it one step at a time. Wegmans was a step. Each and every order that's been solidified, the relationships with A and G, their relationships with FEV, right? Their relationships with Idealies, Penske, Schneider, all of the Innovation Council members, all of these little cornerstones of the business, when you put them together and you add them up, you have the ability to put them on a trajectory, either one of two ways, up or down, whether or not you have a bullish thesis or a bearish thesis on the company. These are things that we need to focus on are the things that we know and not the things that we perceive to be true through our lens if it's not based on things that we know. Guys, I really appreciate you uh, tuning into the message. Want to subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video and good luck in your investment future.